It's been a long campaign, and we've heard a lot of words. And after months of campaign trail eloquence, we finally learned what Senator Obama's economic goal is. As he told Joe the plumber in Ohio, he wants to, quote, spread the wealth around. My friends, now Joe's getting smeared for asking a tough question. Isn't that disgraceful? He's getting smeared. He's getting smeared for revealing that Senator Obama believes in redistributing wealth, not in policies that grow our economy and create jobs. Well, the plumber has become one of the biggest talking points and one of the most powerful symbols in this presidential election campaign. Plumber Joe Wurzelbacher's name came up 26 times in the last presidential debate. Since that debate, Democrats and left-wing blogs have been systematically and viciously attacking Joe the plumber and his reputation. First, let's hear what Senators Biden and Obama had to say about Joe. If you notice, John continues to cling to the notion, evidence the fact this guy Joe the Plumber. I don't have any Joe the Plumbers in my neighborhood that make $250,000 a year and are worried. The Joe the Plumbers in my neighborhood, the Joe the Cops in my neighborhood, the Joe the Grocery Store Owners in my neighborhood, they make like 98% of the small businesses less than $250,000 a year. And they're going to do very well under us, and they're going to be in real tough shape under, under John McCain. He's trying to suggest that, that, that a plumber is the guy he's fighting for. How many plumbers do you know making a quarter million dollars a year? Well, and of course, Joe, the plumber never said he was making a quarter of a million dollars a year. On the internet, lies and rumors are literally everywhere. Politico's, uh, Politico.com's Ben Smith reported Joe Wurzelbacher is not registered to vote. Ben Smith had to issue a correction saying, yes, he is registered to vote. Elsewhere on Politico, Jonathan Martin reported Wurzelbacher has a tax lien against him for about $1,200, but a court representative says Wurzelbacher may not have known that that lien existed at all. The Toledo Blade newspaper reported Joe the Plumber isn't licensed. Wurzelbacher says he doesn't need a license. We contacted the United Association of the Plumbing and Pipe Fitting Industry. That's the nation's largest union for the industry, thinking they might uh, defend Joe Wurzelbacher, but Joe is not a member. In point of fact, the union is supporting Barack Obama because of what it calls is compassion for working people. Senator Obama today intensified his attack against Senator McCain and his economic policies campaigning in Tampa, Florida. Obama declared his own economic agenda has nothing to do with socialism. Now, a few days ago, Joe Wurzelbacher was just another guy from Ohio who worked in the plumbing business. And then Barack Obama approached him while walking a Toledo neighborhood. It became the encounter heard round the world. Your new tax plan is going to tax me more, doesn't it? It's not that I want to punish your success. I just want to make sure that everybody who is behind you, that they've got a chance at success, too. I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. Oh, spread the wealth around. Those four words did more to illuminate where Obama's economic thinking will take America than all of the McCain town halls and press statements. The Obama camp was caught totally off guard by the outpouring of public support for the common sense of plain spoken Joe. By helping Americans realize that there is nothing fair about Obama's tax plans, he put Obama on the defensive big time. He exposed the lie that Obama's tax plan only affects the wealthiest Americans. And now, the race is neck and neck again. As for John McCain, he quickly realized that Joe's message was resonating, and he referenced his story several times during the final presidential debate. This is when the Obama campaign and their boosters in the media sprang into action. Joe, a working-class American who wasn't buying into Barack Utopia, had to be taken down and fast. And it wasn't just the left-wing bloggers who rifled through tax records and made calls to the plumbers' union. NBC president Jeff Zucker unleashed the full force of his network to stop this Joe-mentum. Bloomberg News is reporting that uh, Joe the plumber owes more than $1,000 in back taxes. There's a report that he doesn't have the proper license. And anyway, the story gets better. It turns out America's most famous plumber isn't really a plumber. Reporters today uncovered that Joe Wurzelbacher doesn't have a plumbing license in Ohio. Oh, great investigative reporting. Well, NBC had a satellite truck parked outside Joe the Plumber's house yesterday. I have a question. 
Did it ever, a single day, did it ever send a truck and a reporter to the still defiant terrorist Bill Ayers' house? Has NBC ever really dug into the nature of Obama's relationship with ACORN, now the subject of an FBI investigation in 12 states? You know the answer, N-O, no. But the Peacock does believe its resources are widely used against one American voter who dared to question their messiah. Look, the press is supposed to hold politicians accountable on behalf of the people. Yet today's media are doing the heavy lifting for Team Obama with his slash and smear campaign against people like Joe. Is this type of bullying and intimidation what Americans can expect from an Obama administration in response to serious criticism? Will the media closest to the people, talk radio and the blogosphere, be the next targets? God help us. He was said to have not, not been a registered voter. That's false. Registered in Ohio, voted I, in the primaries. He was said to be fantasizing about his future business prospects on The View. Joy Behar said that. People asked whether it was a plant from the McCain campaign.